Do you know how expensive it is to get cards graded nowadays? Especially cards of this size? It's pretty expensive. Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Clutch's Vault, where cardboard is king. My name is Mike, and I just have a nice little uh, fun mail day video for you guys, another episode for the Collector's Hall that we want to show here on the Collector's Vault. Um, it's, it's pretty exciting. I hope you, I, I kind of wanted to show you guys again more stuff that we've we, we been picking up at like incredibly insane prices. Things that are like, I, I mean like by insane, I mean it's incredibly affordable. Things that are again, that I'm snatching up whenever I get the opportunity. I just want to kind of like show you guys like there are incredible deals out there and you have to take these chances take these little risks and again because it's like you know if, if you are paying for things via ebay paypal all that other stuff there's always money back guarantees you can always return your things there's always there's protection for you in case you know that the deal didn't go through well if someone is trying to scam you i mean again i've made i've made videos about scams don't fall for those things but if you ever do see these nice little like single card sales that almost seem like it's too good to be true, in many cases it is, but you might be able to find those more le legitimate ones and you, things will fall more in your favor. So with all that said, let's go to the table and I'll show you guys some of the really cool cards that I've picked up recently. Hey guys, welcome back to another The Collector's Hall Mail Day presented by The Collector's Vault. Um, so I'm kind of just going to get right into it. We have three things to show you guys. Uh, two Pokemon, one Yu-Gi-Oh. I guess I'm going to kind of divide it up and I'll uh, just show the uh, Pokemon stuff last and Yu-Gi-Oh first. So first up for Yu-Gi-Oh is one uh, Stardust Dragon, the Collector's Rare from uh, Toon Chaos. This is the unlimited one. But I think these are, so, I mean, shockingly, you know, very, very affordable compared to the first ed ones. I think even the first ed ones might be a little bit overpriced, but they'll definitely see a price spike in the future. And uh, I, don't know, I just think comparatively, I, I understand that the whole, I, I understand first ed versus unlimited, but these are actually still really, like, incredibly affordable. I think this is one of those things where pick them up now while you can before they shoot up in price. I will say to the seller, if you are watching this, heads up, this was shipped just in the sleeve and in the top loader like so and then put it into a bubble wrapper don't do this put tape here because now not only did you not did you like not put tape here so that way this could always just you know um fall out like this also this is the opening side so please and this goes to all any other seller out there i would advise what i would do is you can put it in a sleeve and maybe for a car like this you can even double sleeve it for all you know so get a sleeve. You know what? Let me get a sample really, really quick for you guys. Okay, so here is a standard size. Well, this is the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh size, small size sleeve. Here's a standard size sleeve. I would always say, if you want to, just ship it like this. I know you might think, oh, my cost will go up because I'm using two sleeves instead of one. It's, it's a sleeve. Just do it. So that way, oh, this is actually a really nice tight fit. So, ah. all right. Well, you can probably get one that's a little bit more you know, flexible than this one. This one is a bit on the snug side. But regardless, the point I'm trying to make is if you do this, I mean, again, sorry, I, I got the bad sleeve, but do this so that way, even if this falls out, it'll be caught by the sleeve. And then while in this double sleeve, then you put this, then, then regardless of if it falls out, it won't go anywhere if you tape it. But then if you don't do that, do it like this. So that way, God forbid the cells fall out because you didn't put tape here, at least it'll be caught by this. Not ideal. I think the double sleeve is a much better approach. However, just a little food for thought. And now let's take a look at this. Careful. All right. So I have to admit, when you actually hold this card up in the light, this card really is gorgeous. Kind of it, it resembles like an ultimate rare, just uh, a little bit different because it has like that rainbow sheen to it. I mean, I, I think Stardust Dragon definitely is a card that just looks so well with this rarity. You know. Yeah, I guess, like, it's, like, it's very aesthetically pleasing because it is, like, you know, a card that is about stars and space and everything. Yeah, that actually looks really good, guys. So, again, gorgeous specimen, so thank you very much. I don't have your name on me right now, but definitely a gorgeous specimen, and I do appreciate it. I guess for the sake of that video, we'll keep it in here as a memento. Don't ship cards like this. Remember, guys, please put tape on there to make sure it doesn't fall out. There we go. Uh, next, we have two really cool things for Pokemon. We actually have another giant box topper card from the uh, WotC Expedition seri uh, series, or the E-series. So, uh, I do like how you actually pack this in a non-official PSA um, a giant sleeve. It was actually a, uh, 
lunch, looks like a lunch baggie. But uh, yeah, so yeah, these are actually the box toppers that were in top of the Expedition Base Box, Sky Ridge, and Aquapolis boxes. And what we have today is a Venusaur. Now it's cool because these, and this is only a PSA 7, unfortunately. However, I got this for, I, I can't even tell you how much I paid for this. It was like $70. Now, these are getting really hard to find because I, I know people might think like, oh, it's only a seven. That means it's only like near mint. But hey, it's still in near mint condition. But thing, a car like this, these, these things are just so, like, actually, it's funny. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it looks that bad. I would say maybe centering is not perfect, but I'm trying to wonder. It, it might be the corners. So what I was trying to say was these cars are actually really hard to kind of keep in good condition. Like, obviously, if you pull it right out of the box and you put it into a protective case or sleeve, then maybe you can kind of keep it in, like, pristine condition. But in, in most cases... Because these things do flop around the boxes, these, I think these, these are just kind of placed on top, in like on top of the packs in a box. So these are actually really hard to find in good and fairly good condition, and even at all. So I just kind of feel like these are really underrated. These are really hard to find. Pick them up while they're cheap. You know, there are some obviously the more, ones that are more expensive, like the Crystal Charizard box topper. I love the Tyranitar box topper. There's I think there's an Espeon one. There's a, a Feraligator. There's a Crobat randomly. All kind of cool ones. But uh, yeah, I think these are really underrated. You guys should really take a look at, uh, if ever you see these things. Oh, by the way, even getting graded. These actually are really, I think these are actually much more expensive to get graded. Because compared to an ordinary PSA slab, this is much larger, much thicker. It, I believe this costs, like if you do like a, the ordinary, like a standard service, it, this is not going to cost you the ordinary $20. It's going to cost you a lot more. So again, at seventy dollars minus minus God knows how much they paid to grade this thing. I paid a I paid like basically nothing for what the card is. So I'm pretty happy with it. And finally, we have a normal size card. Now I do want us to kind of take a look at the condition of this card first, because I want to kind of do a little bit of a uh, just a little an audit. This was sold to me as played. So let's put it back. So let's take it out of this. And the sleeve carefully, if I can grab it. I can't grab it. Oh my gosh. Professionalism. Still can't grab it. I'm grabbing the card itself. I just want to grab the, uh, the sleeve. All right, bear with me, folks. Okay, right, there we go. That was difficult. Okay, so again, this was sold to me as played. And so far, you can obviously tell there are whitening on the, on the edges and the corners. Nothing crazy, but it definitely is played. Just from looking at that. Let's take a look at him about this. I'll give you guys a heads up. This is definitely a classic original Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Pokemon card. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon card, not a modern one. This is vintage. Now, back actually doesn't look that bad. Again. Definitely waiting on the edges and everything, and then a little spot here in the corners. So, by no means mint, by no means near mint, by no means, like, highly, uh, this will never get a high grade. But, I think this can get a pretty moderate grade. But now we're going to look at the front and see what card this is. And guys, ooh, that's right, first edition, base set, Magneton. Ah, uh, one of the, again... Not one of the more popular Pokemon cards, not one of the most popular Pokemon, but still a gorgeous card nonetheless. And I think highly underrated, highly underpriced. Because now, here's where I was asking you guys, this is going to sold me as played. Now look at this. I'm using the light to see if I can capture any, like, dents or anything. I don't see anything. Uh, definitely some hollow scratches. I think you can see, like, some scratches right there on the surface, so that's unfortunate. But... And that actually might take a good amount of the grading down. But the actual face of the card is really good. I mean, I really don't see any, like, blemishes. Maybe some some slight silvering. But I actually am really impressed that this was actually sold as... Oops, actually, I think I see a little bit of dirt right there. That might actually come off. But overall, like, if this was sold to me as played, I mean, I am actually fairly... I'm very impressed. Because these cars, again, like, because it was sold to me in play condition, it was, uh, re it was really affordable. Uh, I think a little bit too affordable. Because I think this is definitely grade-worthy, and I think this could probably get, like, a 6 or a Potentially a 6 or a... Well, I think a 6 is not out of the question, but potentially even a 7. I I'm not gonna, you know... 
I might put my foot my, my foot in my mouth later, but I think if this guy gets graded, this could get a six, potentially a seven. And if it falls in that near mint category, that's gonna definitely increase the price significantly higher than what I paid for it. Yes, yeah, so here's the what the sticker said. And no, this right here, no doubt. See, I saw that and I'm like, whoa, was that whitening? Nope, that was just some dirt on the sleeve. This is again by by no means in my opinion played. I think this is a lightly played. Maybe falls in the it, it falls in the category between moderately played and lightly played. But uh, yeah, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little opening. Again, kind of want to show you some more like vintage stuff. This is I would say this is definitely vintage and some more modern like lottery higher end stuff, I guess, which is pretty cool. Uh, I love adding these to the vault, and uh, I, I didn't have one of these yet, so I'm kind of happy I added it for, you know, for my collection. Definitely going into the vault where it's safe and sound. Hope you guys enjoyed this opening. Uh, please, you know, check back for more uh, awesome openings, and I'm, I definitely, I'm, I definitely want to do some more, like, modern Yu-Gi-Oh! videos as far as, like, deck profiles and stuff. But if you guys are just here for the collectible stuff, for the vintage stuff, you know, I have plenty of, of those videos on the way, too. So, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.